Day after day, we are seeing the fallout of the condo crisis. Got this, and it says we are to be evicted in five days. So it's happening as we speak with 1.5 million condos looking at being obsolete. Suddenly facing possible eviction in a matter of days. Dozens of Miami Beach residents learning they may have to find a new place to live. And this, this is absolute insanity. I have found video. State requirements to make condo buildings safer is pri pricing a lot of people out of the market. All the buildings that they are in the process of being sold. After video. I am being forced out so after video south florida is now in a condo crisis of people being evicted out of their homes foreclosed on these humongous assessments being thrown on top of people with 80 percent of the condos in the state of florida being functionally obsolete that is wild maintenance reserves and insurance you're talking about um, risking lives if buildings are not well kept. And it's like nobody's really talking about it and I'm gonna keep talking about it until everybody is aware that if you are owning a condo, going to own a condo, think about owning a condo or have a family member that does own a condo, share this with them so they understand that this is coming down. Yeah, I thought I was gonna die here actually. She shows me a letter from May on behalf of the association. It shows that she has a lien placed on her property, which could be foreclosed on because she has yet to pay more than $20,000 for the special assessment and late fees. We are seeing I mean, corruption and condo boards. Ernesto Cuesta is the president of the Brickell Homeowners Association. He says state laws recently passed ensuring that buildings pass milestone recertification and have money in reserves are necessary. All the buildings require more maintenance. An older building, uh, you have to do heavy investment. Some people that they are in fix, on fixed income, uh, it's very hard for them to come out with more additional funding. Scary. This process that we're going through now is necessary for everybody's uh, best interest. This point right here is really, really crucial in what I'm trying to say. One of the oldest tricks in the book in business is when you go in to business and you have more money than the other person, you arbitrarily raise the capital calls to the point where nobody else can make that capital contribution. And then you take their market share, you take their share, you take their ownership in the company because they can't match the capital call. And what you're going to see in some of these situations, you have a capital call, an arbitrary number that maybe they rose above and beyond what was actually needed in order to force a capital call and push everybody else out of their ownership in the condominium, ownership on the board, ownership in the property. And if they don't have it, well, they're forced out. And you only have to do that to enough of them to get that super majority and then just change all the rules. And then they get forced right out. And that is how it happens. There's a saying in business that you never go into business as a, as a person with not as much money as the other guy. You never go into business with super rich people if you're not, because they will just do a capital call and you'll be forced out and they'll just take your share because you can't afford to stay in the game. They're putting money in and you're supposed to too, but you can't, then you're gone. And that's how that works. I'm trying to explain it for everybody out there. This is a really bad situation. They do this in companies all the time, mergers and acquisitions, company takeovers. It's wild, but it happens and you gotta be ready for it and you see it coming. I see it coming all over these condos in South Florida and in you know, North Florida, be careful. One handed down at Carriage Hills pushed Casey to put her retirement home on the market, hoping for a miracle to stay in her home. So we are seeing the government coming in and forcing assessments on buildings that are at that 30 year mark, 25 years if you're within, I think three miles of the water. Um, this is really a question of salt water versus concrete and rebar. And for those condos out there that are not concrete, they're wooden structures or they're made with you know stucco, things that are just, uh, they don't age well. Well, they're seeing humongous assessments and some of them are just gonna have to be torn down because of this new law. Uh, it really caught the real estate world with their pants down. Uh, real estate doesn't move very fast. It is a kind of a, 
a slow sluggish type cycle. They, uh, many of these buildings, the codes have changed so much over the years. I've talked about this in detail throughout all my videos. Go watch my other condo videos. I've talked about this in detail. That in some of these buildings, they're just gonna have to be knocked down. And I think a lot of this is being forced prematurely. And I'll get to that. I think we have seen a lot of land grabs going on and we're going to see more into next year. I did a quick search and found 12 recorded liens filed at Carriage Hills this year in Broward County. I reached out to the association's president and attorney asking if they plan to foreclose on all 12 homes or if they were willing to create a new payment plan for residents. Uh, it is uh, really a situation where just don't buy a condo in the next year or so and until all this is figured out. I'm going to talk about at the end of this video how to buy these condos, but I need you to listen up to all this that is going on. People out there need help and probably in worse shape than me, right? So, you know, I can't be too gimme about this, but if there was anything that anybody could do for me, you know, you have my 100% attention. They've created a perfect course of events for big conglomerate holding companies, real estate firms to come in and just take over these buildings. And some of them, the land is worth way more than the condo. They're just gonna crush them and build new condos. I've said this over and over again that the buildings will be sold off. And when they get these super majorities on these boards, they're just gonna snatch them right out from underneath people. We saw that in the last video I made about this. I shared plenty of clips where it was happening. Many real estate attorneys are like, yeah, this is a thing. And they changed the law right under the table. We bought the place a year ago for $130,000. It's walking distance to the stores. We can go to stores, we can go out at night. The owners of 102 units at the Garden of the Bay, a waterfront property located at 6484 Indian Creek Drive in Miami Beach, received the same letter on Thursday. Um, what to do with it? Uh, yeah, I'll just probably have to hire a lawyer. I'm sad about the situation. Amon said he just received another document stating that uh, somebody is missing a piece of railing on a balcony, and so the building is not up to the building code, and we all have to move out. Something horrific that we never, never seen before. We have until the 24th or of June and, and, and it's something incredible. The building is located on a street lined with luxury condos. The nearly 70 year old structure looks like a relic according to Miami-Dade mayor, unit owners. About 2018 where they use 80% uh, voting super majorities to force rules to be changed and take over these condos and then they just sell them away from people. They put a lien in their apartment and they're basically thrown on the street. Questions. I'm alone now and I'm 81 years old. This is not right. It's just not right. We have to stop this and that's why we're here. I need you to really look at your condo association rules. Request as many documents from these associations as possible. Request all financials, all finances and have. If, if there's a bunch of you in a condo, and I'm not a lawyer, I'm just giving you my thoughts here. Request as many documents as possible. If there are a few of you in one of these condos together, go in together, work together, request documents, request financials, and, and really push back on these board members. I would look through who these board members are and make sure they're not secretly. We were told six of the 16 owners could not pay the $8,158 in a lump sum. On the side of some of these large real estate firms trying to absorb the building, because this is happening. You gotta be very savvy on how this stuff works. Make sure that any of the presidents, the HOA members previously, if they knew this stuff was coming down or they knew that there was something they were they could hide in order for them to get a financial gain in the future, you make sure you look into that very, very, very closely. You know, they were forced to do these SIR studies. And, and, and if you look at these structural integrity survey, surveys and studies, figure out who did those studies. Make sure it's a third party, because in some of these instances that I've showed on this course of videos, the last three or four videos, that some of them came back twice the price of what uh, others were. I mean, there was one building came back with $50 million in repairs. They got a third study or a third party study and it was 20 million. And they were being assessed for this large amount. And that's my other question is when you have these large assessments, 20, 30, 40, 100,000, 200,000. Well, make sure you question who came up with that number. 
okay? And is there overage? And ask this question, if the building goes under repairs and more is found and you can't complete it with that amount of money, is there gonna be another one? Is there gonna be another capital call? Because a lot of people are not liquid enough to just come up with these assessments. And if not, they're having them um, tacked onto as a lien to their property. Or if they're not paid, they're just getting foreclosed on. Like their properties are getting snatched right out from underneath them. Uh, you know, my heart goes out for these people and my, my goal is to educate as many people as possible the best way I can on this channel um, that maybe this helps you. Maybe this gives you an understanding of what the chessboard is actually doing. Um, a lot of these buildings, these older buildings are next to newer buildings. And the goal is to get rid of that older building and build these new, newer buildings. I've looked at some of the, the coastline and you see these very, you know, three, four story condos. And you know that the powers that be want 50 story condos. They want to use that space differently. And in some cases, PVC pipe only lasts so long. Concrete only lasts so long. Rebar, we've seen in my other videos, start flaking. The concrete starts flaking. You know, a lot of the infrastructure in the buildings, the wiring, everything, just the floor plan themselves is, is hard to work with for the future. And you're seeing these, these buildings meet their term. Um, there's some in Miami that are very old and there's some in some of these cities that were built very poorly. And the concrete mix was just bad and they were, you know, the cocaine cowboys of real estate. You know what really, really gripes me on a lot of this stuff is when they stop the media from seeing things. You know, I showed in the last video that they kept the media off the property, even though owners of the condominium wanted uh, the media to come on and expose all this was going on. Anytime in any part, whether it's the government or an entity open to the public uh, public forum or it's a business open to the public and they start hiding and not letting cameras see what was going on. That is how corruption festers and gets bigger, especially with the government. When you go into City Hall and they won't let you film, when you go into your own property that you have the ability to and there is corruption on the board or there's corruption in the building projects and they won't let you film that, well, there's a reason why. They're covering up something. And that can be a real problem. You know, for me, as I guess you could call me a journalist, a media person, a influencer on the internet, when I hear somebody say, turn that camera off, I'm like, what are you covering up? And that's why the First Amendment, freedom of the press, the ability to go out and be an independent journalist exists. The only way we are hearing about this right now is from guys like me putting it on the internet. You know, some of these condo associations were rocked by hurricanes, they were rocked by fire, they are rocked by a lot of repairs that just happened. And when you couple that with an assessment like this, you know, some of these, these associations, you know, in their defense have been hit very, very hard and the reserves are low. And some of them are just insolvent. And some were run very poorly. Some were run very well. It, it, it's sad that you could have somebody that's really trying their best get hit with something like this and it affects so many people. I knew a guy that a hot water heater exploded on a top floor and it flooded all the lower units. You know, and, and who's going to pay for those hotel rooms for these people to have a place to stay while it's being fixed? And I'll say, and I said this in the last video, when these repairs come down, these structural repairs, we're seeing people get removed from their uh, apartment or their condos for railing, for um, cracks in siding and things that they're calling structural and dangerous. Well, they're getting pushed out of their condo to go where? A hotel room for how long? <laughs> okay, you know, if that's your home, it's not your second or third home. This, this is this is some people's primary people uh, home, a lot of people's primary home, and they're having to go live in a hotel room or they're getting uh, some type of living quarters that are subpar and that's the only option they got. What if you have a family? What if you work from home? What if you have all these things and you're just forced out? Who is going to take care of these people? And that's what infuriates me about when the government makes you do these things, they force these hands and they don't allow for any flexibility to say, hey, you know what, I know the timeline is right here. Well, what if we, what if we extend over this? Like, what if we let certain criteria of people extend over and as long as they're trying their best to figure it out and there's no immediate problems, well, let them figure it out. The government hasn't said, well, what happens if they don't meet this deadline? Is there large fines coming down, which will hurt 
the owners even worse? Are they going to what? I don't think it's been very clear on what's going to happen if they don't make it by this date. But it has given these real estate companies the option to take properties from people. And I'm willing to bet that they knew from the filings of some of these condos that this one's 80% insolvent. This one, if you just assessed half the people, they would not be able to pay and we could take that unit over. We could take that, that building over and do whatever we want to. I mean, um, as I'm watching these videos one after another and hearing from these people one after another, you're finding out that 80% of the people in a lot of these places can't come up with the money. Like they, they are not able to pay the assessment if they do, they won't be able to feed themselves. They're, they're living on IRAs, fixed incomes, retirements. And when they get assessed by these things out of nowhere, they don't have the liquidity to pay for it. So we're looking at a major housing crisis in Florida and South Florida since there's so many condos. I mean, 1.5 million condos. And this is a pure pure experiment going on with real estate. And this is going to spread into the other states. It's gonna spread all the way up the coast on both sides of the country. It's gonna spread anywhere around a lake. It's gonna spread, you know, swamp land, Florida is swamp, you know, Louisiana, um, anywhere on the coastline, Mississippi, uh, Florida, Alabama, Texas, California, if you're living on a cliff, I've showed videos where condos are sliding down the side of the the actual cliffs um, if you live in canada I, I hear it's a big problem up there too insurance companies are going to force these repairs they're going to force it just like they're doing on single family homeowners insurance is a crisis in the state of florida and i don't think politicians have an idea of how to fix insurance on single family homes much less condos condos you're marrying a condo association you're marrying a building when you buy a condo. And <laughs> the bad part about that is um, when they're forced to have an insurance part, uh, policy that fluctuates and you're responsible for something that happened on the far side corner of the building, whether you, you, you're doing everything possible in your own building, inside your own walls, you're doing your best, but that far corner of the building, there's a fire because somebody left a cigarette on a balcony. You're responsible for that. And they might say, well, no, you're not. Well, in retrospect, you are. Down the line, you will pay through higher premiums, through higher assessments, through everything for that problem. You know, I don't think politicians know how to fix the insurance problem. They won't let the market fix it because once you created that problem as the government, the market can't fix itself because the government always comes in and fixes it or tries to fix it, which creates another problem and another problem. It's like pulling that string of a yarn ball and it just starts to unravel. And uh, the, these condos make up so much of the real estate in these communities that you would have massive, massive, massive fallout if all this happens. I mean, can you imagine how long the construction projects would take? They would be hammering and drilling for years and nobody would enjoy the beach. Nobody would want to go there on vacation. And the, the, the commerce would just go to zero. The construction workers, the families, the owners, the banks, the, they would all feel the pain. And in many of these places, they'll just be crushed and start all over again. But I happen to be a real estate agent here on the Gulf Coast of Florida, Alabama, Pensacola, all the way to Destin, Orange Beach. My email is down below. I'd be happy to help you. And if I can't help you, I'll find somebody that can. So just hit me up and I'll do my best. 925,000 condos are 30 years old. That's wild. And they're right in the scope of this entire problem. And you know, we keep talking about three stories and above. Well, that's gonna spread, okay? <laughs> Don't, don't, don't think politicians are not going to target three stories and below very soon. They're going to target these condo associations. They're going to make it much harder for them to work, They'll move left or right. These assessments are coming, especially in these older structures. Um, insurance is going to go up. And if you're on a fixed income, they are slowly turning up the temperature on the pot that you're in to the point where it's gonna get more expensive and more expensive and more expensive. With a condo on a fixed income, it is very, very hard to contain your cost. 
the cost of ownership will go up. One, because things are more expensive, inflation happens. Two, the building is aging, so it's gonna need more and more repairs. That's why you can depreciate buildings over time through the tax code, because the IRS knows these buildings are going to need maintenance. Some of them only last so long. Some of them get knocked down after so long. And if you're buying into an old building, you have to know concrete only lasts so long, pipes only last so long, parking lots only last so long, that pool in the back only lasts so long. And know these things and know, you know, your cheap little condo expenses is going to get bigger. You know, especially when they start making people, uh, condo associations, replace all those windows, all those balconies, all those rails. And that's what they're doing right now is rails, balconies, things that are structural, things that are on that six point of, of things they're gonna inspect, which I've talked about in the other videos. Those things are gonna be very expensive to, to repair. And, and, and just keep these things in mind and understand that it's gonna get costly. And uh, with bureaucracy and everything that happens with uh, you know, real estate, the government, these municipal po codes, permits are gonna get more expensive. I think like 40% of the build of a property is permits and bureaucracy, red tape, uh, doing all of the, the documents with the county, the city, everything involved, just to be able to work on it. Not even the cost to work on it, just for the guy at the government to say, you may now work on it, has gone up, up, up. It's gonna continue to go up, up, up. You know, I believe there should be a guilty mind disclosure. We see seller's disclosures in real estate as a real estate agent, and you see that uh, if you knew something was wrong with the property, you must disclose it. And usually when you find it out after the fact, you know, people get litigated for that sometimes. And you gotta be, know that as, you know, an owner. And I think uh, we're gonna see a fiduciary duty on a lot of these, these, these board members, these condo association members, if you knew something was coming and you knew that stairway was bad and you knew it was gonna be a six-figure assessment, that elevator shaft was bad and you knew it was gonna be a six-figure assessment and you didn't disclose that when you sold that person your prop property and you got a large gain, a financial gain out of it, you're responsible. You know, you are responsible. And I really think lawmakers, need to, they need to look at these things. They need to ask these questions. As a real estate agent here on the Gulf Coast, I see these things all the time. Like, you knew that. <laughs> I know you knew that because we saw that inspection and that sinkhole in the back was there and you didn't say nothing. And uh, we know from the aerial views of that property, there used to be a swimming pool there and or there used to be a blah 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 there and you didn't tell us so it's it's a full spectrum problem between hoa dues going up condo dues going up between insurance going all over the place or not being able to be be found you've got real estate agents that have no idea what they're doing now that the nar settlement has come down and it completely just made the market stop get frozen i was at a convention yesterday and everybody's just like whoa you know like the market is just whoop, stopped. And then we've got interest rates and we've got the whole Fed and the economy problem. Like it is wild how expensive things have gotten. And then now we've got this pure, pro uh, got this implosion of just real estate. Like it, it's just, why can we not figure these things out? And, and I always wonder like, why does the bureaucracy exist so much in this? I think you will see a lot of these condo association, HOA presidents, board members have a hand in a lot of these problems. Oh, they, uh, there's pure corruption in a lot of it. And you can't tell me as the fallout comes out, you're gonna see massive investigations, depositions, subpoenas come down for financial inaccuracies. And I think if you got a lawyer in some of these situations, they're gonna, they're gonna find, when they start suing, they're gonna find that somebody got their hand in the cookie jar and they're gonna find money in places that maybe it shouldn't be. And that's gonna be very interesting. In conclusion, to protect yourself if you're buying a condo, I would make sure you request all documents possible, okay? If your buyer agent does not know how to do condos, never done one, or is uh, can't figure it out, get rid of them, find another agent, have that conversation before you hire them and sign your buyer's agreement. Two, 
Make sure all those documents are on the MLS. If you go on the MLS or your agent goes in the MLS and there's no documents about the condo, go to the next one because a good seller's agent is gonna make sure all documents are present. Probably gonna be Johnny on the spot with the financials, the CCRs, the any type of HOA documents, condo association documents, any of that, they're gonna be there, there, there. Probably will already have an inspection list there if there's an assessment, you need to find out if there's not if there's going to be another assessment. Are we done with assessing? You know, have we already had our service study? Have we already had these things? Talk to the lender. Okay, make sure the lender is good on all these things. If the lender has any red flags, throw them. Do all this in your inspection process. Make sure you have an inspection process. If you see a, a, a condo's price right now, and uh, you know, consult your own agent. Dot dot dot. But if you see a, a condo price right now and we're still months out from this SIR study coming back, like there's a lower price. <laughs> the, the bottom on some of these condos at this moment on this date has not hit rock bottom yet. There are, they are all over the place for sale. And <laughs> being the fact that the publicity is what it is, the problems are what they are, you're going to see the price continue, continue to go down. And in some of these condo associations, some of these buildings, uh, they're going to be sold for cash. Nobody's going to want to finance them, especially if litigation is wrapped up. You don't know when litigation will hit. <laughs> you don't know when those papers are going to get filed. And you can wind up not being able to get out if you're an owner, um, not being able to pay those assessments because whether you can pay on closing, you have to pay before you, you, you list the property or if it can be paid after closing. All these questions you know, on, on buying a property and buying a condo. Also understand there is a insurance crisis in the state of Florida. It's gonna spread everywhere else. Understand that, know that, and uh, see, does that fit into your financial spectrum? Um, these are all things that um, are gonna decide on whether you can afford it, not afford it, or even wanna hassle with it. You're seeing as these HOA dues go up, these condo dues go up, the insurance go up, um, as a short-term rental, Airbnb, or even just like a long-term rental, if you can't get a decent rent rate on that property, you're gonna be in the red. You're going to lose money on that property. And it's gonna be really hard to find a renter at some of these elevated price points for the finance to make sense. At some point, the rents uh, have to be you know, in proportion to the price of the property or um, of the expenses of the property it's got a cash flow or it's not an investment or you're just looking at taking the loss and 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 maybe just playing the appreciation game and that's tough me as a value investor that's just never been something i want to do unless you can get these condos at a really good price and you're through the assessments and you see the building's in good shape it's a newer building all these things maybe you'll be okay but no if it's an old building these questions are always going to be there as the as the codes change, it gets exponentially more expensive to fix that building up to what is code for today, you know, versus 1970, <laughs> you know? That's why one of them fell. Joking, don't sue me. But in conclusion, know the entire financial picture. Know what could happen. Know whether you're wanting to take that chance. And if you've owned it for a very long time and your cost basis is really low, well, maybe it's not a thing. You know, if you get a $100,000 assessment, uh, you bought it for 60 or your parents bought it for 60 or at 160 and the, the thing's worth 400,000. Well, maybe that's not a thing. Maybe it's not a worry. You know, just do the math in your head and pay attention to the news and, and hopefully everybody will come out. But uh, just be careful and don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you on the next video.